Hi, I'm Chef Robin. Uh, today's workshop is from Hands, Helping and Nurturing Diverse Seniors in the Heinenberg Senior Community Center. Today we're gonna to be talking about grains explained. Uh, grains are one of those mystical things for a lot of people to figure out how to include in their diet. So today we just kind of want to demystify them and give you guys some helpful cooking tips and understand why actually we want to include grains in our diet. Um, when we were younger and we learned about the food pyramid, cereal grains were a very small part of what was included in that food pyramid. As we become more and more knowledgeable about foods and how they affect our health, the RDA recommended allowance now for grains is six to nine servings a day, and half of those servings are supposed to be whole grains. So let's talk about what a whole grain is, figure out why we would want to eat whole grains, and then also how to prepare them. So this is just the new plate of what is a healthy meal. And so half is fruit and vegetables. And then a quarter should be your grain serving and a quarter is a healthy protein. And that's why we want to figure out about healthy grains. For those of you who might be questioning what a whole grain is exactly, a whole grain is a kernel from a cereal grass. So these are some amber waves of grain right here. Um, and that whole kernel still contains all three edible parts of the whole grain. So those edible parts are, we're gonna talk now about grains anatomy instead of grains anatomy. Uh, in grains anatomy, grains are very small, they're kernels. The outer part is the bran, and that's the protective outer skin of the grain. But what that bran does for us health-wise when we eat a whole grain is it gives us really, really healthy fiber. So the bran is bringing the fiber to the plate. Also, it contains B vitamins. Then the starchy, inner part of that kernel is called the endosperm and that's the largest part of the grain. It's the food for the germ. It also provides protein and vitamins and minerals. Like I said, it's a, a starchy carbohydrate. I just want you to be aware that every single part of this whole grain is bringing something different to the table. That's why we want to include them all. And then the wheat germ, which I'm sure you guys have heard about before, is where a new plant could sprout. It also contains B vitamins, but the germ is where those healthy fats from a whole grain come from. So the bran is going to give us fiber. The endosperm is going to be a starch and give us protein and vitamins. And then the germ is going to add on to all of that other goodness with healthy fats. So all three parts of a whole grain are very important to include in our diet. So I kind of went over that, but here we have a poster of why actually to include grains. And again, right off the bat, healthy fiber. And fiber is really important as we age because all of our systems are getting a little bit slower, a little bit older, uh, we may need some extra help, and by including healthy, healthy fiber in our diet, it can keep us in the rooms that we want to be in instead of spending a lot of time away. Um, healthy nutrients, all three parts of that grain are bringing healthy nutrients to the table. Iron and B vitamins, copper, magnesium, zinc. I can't tell you exactly why, our bodies might need copper or zinc. We could look them all up, go through the list. But just remember that all of those different systems in our body 
need different things. And so if we can find a food that helps to address those needs, it's important that it's included in our diet. Also, eating healthy grains can lower your cholesterol. The fats that are in whole grains are healthy fats. It also can reduce chronic inflammation. Inflammation is an issue that a lot of people have as they age. So anything that can address that and reduce that is important. Like I said before, the daily recommended daily allowance is now thought to be at least six to nine servings a day. And a serving size, just to give you some idea of what a serving size would be, would be one slice of bread, three cups of cooked popcorn, and actually that is not a very large amount. A cup is actually a small amount, so three cups of popcorn, not really that much. One half cup of grits or barley or cooked millet, oatmeal or rice, one half cup is considered a serving. One half cup of pasta is considered a serving. One cup of whole grain cereal and one half of a bagel or an English muffin is considered a serving. So where you see these numbers, six to nine, may seem like a lot of food to you. Actually, it's not that much. If you were to go through your menu for the day, you probably could be even over that amount. So um, let's take a few minutes and I, this is what I really wanna spend time on because a lot of people uh, are anxious about cooking whole grains. So they see kernels of rice that are beautiful. Rice can come in all different colors and shapes and varieties. And they're very threatened by, oh, but I don't know how to cook that. I don't know how to cook that. So just to be assured, when you go to the grocery store, if you buy grains in a package, every grain that you buy in a package is going to have recipes with it and cooking instructions with it. So say for instance, you buy a bag of rice. On the back is all the information concerning a serving size and also how to cook it and also how to include it in a menu. If you buy your grains, from a bulk department in a co-op or a health food store, oftentimes they will have menus available for you. And if you decide to buy grains in that way, you can decide to take home half a cup of amaranth, three cups of spelt, five cups of teff flour, any amount that you care to because it's not prepackaged you decide how much you would like to buy and take home. But the health food store here, City Market, also has provided these lovely folders that list uh, explanations all about the grains that are in the market and how to prepare them. There's a recipe on, back, on the back, along with serving information. This is about the rices that they have. And this is about whole cereal grains that they have. So three really nice pamphlets loaded with information. Um, they tell you cooking time, they tell you cooking ratios, lots and lots of information that are available for free. So, and you don't even really have to buy the grains if you don't want to, you could buy something else, but these are there for the taking. So very nice reference material to take advantage of. So refined grains are whole grains that have been milled to take away the bran or the germ and then sifted smooth and sometimes even bleached to be a nice bright white color. So when you hear the words take away or you hear the words bleached, that might kind of like be an alarm system for you that that's probably not the healthiest to eat. If you're going to enjoy grains, I want you to enjoy them in any way that you find flavorful to you. If you're intimidated by whole grains, 
in finding grains in a refined manner that you enjoy to eat. It's much more important that you eat than not eating, but refined grains are definitely less healthy for you because they have taken part of that nutrient system away. They have taken the bran away, they have taken the germ away. So consequently, when that happened during the Industrial Revolution, when they started grinding grains and sifting grains to the point of not having the bran and the germ in them, people actually became ill. They became ill with a disease called pellagra and a disease called beriberi. So what happened then was they started enriching grains. It seems very kind of counterintuitive, but people became enamored of white bread. People became enamored of white pasta. It was a lighter texture. It wasn't quite so dense. It had a longer lasting shelf life. And so the consumer and the manufacturer weren't going to go backwards. They decided instead, well, let's just put back in some of what we've taken out. So they did do that, and that is referred to an enriched grain product. So when that happens, <clears throat> they can't necessarily put it back in exactly as the whole grain naturally occurred. Some of these vitamins are synthesized. Some of them don't come from a natural product. Also, they can never replace the fiber that's lost. So enriched products are not unhealthy for you, but ultimately the healthiest over and above is the whole grain itself. So let's backtrack a little bit now and we'll learn about cooking. There's three different ways that I want to speak to you about cooking grains. None of them are threatening. All of them are easy, and I hope that you enjoy it. All right, so the first method is really, really simple. It's just like you would cook pasta or noodles. You have a pot of boiling water. It's not measured. It's just boiling water with a little bit of salt added. If you can use salt, you put your grain in, you boil it until it's tender, you drain it out. There you go. The thing about the pasta method is that oftentimes if you have a lot of leftover water, some of that nutrient is going to be in that water. And if you don't reuse that water for either making a soup or starting a bread or steaming your vegetables, it's possible that you're going to lose nutrient matter down the sink. So. <laughs> it's a very reliable way to cook grains, but necessarily if you find yourself pouring away that water nine times out of ten, you might want to rethink how much water you're adding your grains you're adding your grains to, or grains added to water, um, or <laughs> um, or maybe just trying another method. So. This is the most intimidating method for people, the ratio method, because they feel like they never get the ratios exactly right. All grains have a different matter of, manner of water that they want to absorb to become nice and tender and fluffy. The amount of grain, I mean, the amount of water that you would add to quinoa to cook nice and softly is different the amount of water that you might want to cook basmati rice in. So <clears throat> it is important if you're going to use the ratio method to check your recipe either on your package or on your flyer and start off with a measured amount of water. It could be two parts water to one part grain, three parts water to one part grain, one and a half parts water to one part grain. It's going to vary, but you start off with measured liquid, then you add measured grain to that liquid, bring it up to a boil, turn it down to a simmer, and cover it and keep simmering until all of that liquid is absorbed. 
<clears throat> so it's a timing thing. It's also a measurement thing. And that's why I think people sometimes get a little bit put off by the ratio method, but it is the way most rices, wheats, arrows are cooked. Uh, the third method is if for extra flavor, the pilaf method. I'm sure everyone has heard of rice pilaf, where you saute aromatics. And what I mean by aromatics are garlic and onions, carrots, celery. You saute those, add your dry grain into those, add some salt or herbs and flavoring, add your liquid carefully, simmer until tender, simmer until all of that liquid is absorbed, then you have vegetables with your grain, kind of a done deal. So <clears throat> let's talk a little bit more about tips for cooking because there's some important things that I would like for everyone to remember, especially for buying grains in a bulk grain department or a bulk situation, you wanna wash them off. I just have this little strainer I put my grains in this, rinse them, rinse them, rinse them. So washing is very important. Also, pre-soaking for quicker cooking. Some of these grains, because it is the whole grain, it is the brand, it is the endosperm, it is the germ, all contained in one little wonderful package, can take a fair amount of time to cook. That said, if you've ever heard of overnight oatmeal, all it is is pre-soaking overnight. So before you go to bed, measure out your oatmeal, measure out your liquid, pour it over, set it on your counter, and then the next morning, your cooking time is quite reduced. And that can be done with any of these other harder grains as well. So this is dry roasting for added flavor. <clears throat> Dry roasting would be after you've washed your grains, if you didn't pre-soak them, just to get a saute pan, have it warm, put your grains in, toast them around, <coughs> and it creates this nice nutty flavor, just an added element of flavor to your grains. Another thing that I recommend is once you become comfortable cooking whole grains, do batch cooking. And what I mean by that is grains are marvelous in that they are one of the very few foods that when you cook them, you actually end up with more. There's not that many foods out there that don't shrink or tighten up or you lose moisture and you're left with less than you started with. But with grains, you're adding moisture and you end up with more. So a cup of quinoa cooked is going to yield you two and a half to three cups of quinoa finished product. So I encourage you, once you become comfortable, to make more than for just one meal and what you have left over can go into soups, or stews, onto salads, into muffins, anything that you would enjoy, pancakes, anything that you could see adding your grain to, to kind of extend its life and to make your life in the kitchen a little bit easier and shorter. So do batch cooking and make a little bit more than just for one meal. <coughs> Another thing that you can do is for flavor to add aromatics, like we were speaking about before, to your liquid. And also you can change up your liquid. You can use chicken stock, vegetable stock. Lots of people like to do a Thai basmati rice in coconut milk. So it doesn't always have to be water. It can be another liquid. You just want to be careful. Coconut milk has a lot of fat, so you wanna kind of keep an eye on that as it's cooking and absorbing. <clears throat> Except for this method, you're never necessarily going to be boiling your grain. It's always going to be on a simmer and slowly absorbing that liquid up. So uh, there are some helpers. This is if you are <clears throat> totally fearful <laughs> 
of scorching the bottom of your pot and having rice that you're never going to get out. Uh, there's things on the market called heat diffusers. And all they are are uh, plates of metal with a wooden handle, usually, that slide right over top of your oven, bur oven burner, stovetop burner. You can use it with an electric oven. You can use it with a uh, natural gas oven if you have a flame or just a burner. And diffusing means that it kind of spreads out the heat so that there are no hot spots anywhere on your pot and the heat is much more evenly distributed along the surface of the bottom of your pot. If you don't want to go out and buy a heat diffuser, but you have a friend that gets a big can of coffee from Costco, just take that coffee uh, top through your um, can opener and if you have one of those super duper senior healthy or senior friendly can openers, it leaves a nice round edge and not a raw edge. And that can be your diffuser. Just put that again on top of your burner, put that again underneath your pot, and it will help you if you are scared of scorching the bottom of your pot. Um, another thing is a lot of people got air cookers for Christmas. Uh, air cookers are great for cooking rice. There's also appliances that are specifically called rice cookers, where you just put the amount of liquid in, you put the amount of grain in, you turn the dial, you put the top on, walk away, make the rest of your dinner. Very easy. And then pressure cookers also. You can pressure cook grains. <clears throat> and if you have your pressure cooker instruction, it will give you the number of minutes and the amount of pressure that you need to have available to do that. So it's really not at all difficult to cook grains. You really can find a lot of direction out there if you search it out. I wanna talk now just about how to include some simple steps on how to include whole grains in your diet. And like making any changes, any lifestyle changes at all, especially to your diet, I'm just going to advise you if you don't eat whole grains on a regular basis now, to slowly start out. I wanna challenge myself to eat a whole grain every single day for a week if it was something that I never had done before. I would start slow, introduce them maybe at breakfast time. And when we talk about at breakfast time, you might wanna in introduce steel cut oats, which are very healthy for you. And also <coughs> um, have a designation of being whole grain. So, or oatmeal is also very healthy. This is just a little bit less processed than oatmeal. So, but, if you're a cereal person at breakfast time too, this is a toasted oat. And again, whole grain, it says it right on the box. That's what you wanna search out is those packaging that have the words whole grain on them. And then you know that that product has been made using all of the oat and not just some milled part of it. So, Start slow. If you start at breakfast, you might want to trade out to something that's a little bit more healthy. Um, if we think about lunchtime or if we think about toast, there are several products on the market. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a Pepperidge Farm. And if you can see, and I'm not necessarily endorsing that you run out and get Pepperidge Farm. I'm just asking you to be kind of an investigative shopper, to actually search out for those products that are healthiest for you, calorie for calorie. We all have to eat, so let's make those calories that we do eat as healthy as we can, at least once or twice a while. So, um, whole grain oatmeal right there you can't avoid it so it's it's saying to you that the oatmeal that was used to make this bread and the wheat flour that was used to make this bread 
all were whole grains before they got started. So that's important. This is bread from uh, Clingers, which a lot of you know. And this is a Vermont maple oat bread. It has very few ingredients. So that's kind of another indicator sometimes of a healthy product in that it will list everything that's in it and the list will be short. If you are buying a product that maybe has a list that's so long and so magnified that you can't read it, maybe it has some things in there that aren't the healthiest and possibly not whole grain. So I'm just encouraging you to search it out, take your readers if you need to, but, um, <clears throat> and when you look at the ingredients in this, it's only, it starts off with unbleached, enriched wheat flour, stone ground, whole wheat flour. So the second product, whole oats, whole grain oats. So the second and third product in this bread are whole grains. So you can be pretty sure that this is a whole grain product and a nice bread to enjoy. It is, if you can just see by the color, it is a little darker definitely darker than sunbeam white bread. So that could also be a good indicator to you of its healthy nature. Um, <clears throat> if we switch gears and think about dinner time, one thing that was helpful is pre-soaking, but the manufacturers of food products and the grocery stores want your dollar. So they are doing everything to keep up with food trends, food recommendations from doctors, and also to alleviate a lot of stress in the kitchen. So when I was shopping for this workshop, these are two products that I came across that are super quick. Success, 10 minutes. This is quinoa, boil in a bag, 10 minutes. 100% quinoa. So it's a really straightforward product. It's very easy to cook, obviously, if it only takes you 10 minutes. And that would be something that you could start and then create a meal around in very little time. So just to consider that. And this is minute, 10 minutes, brown rice. So ordinarily, if you're buying brown rice and cooking brown rice, it can take anywhere from 45 to 55 minutes to cook. This brown rice has already been parboiled for you, which is just a process that they've, you know, boiling. They've done the first step for you. So it's enabled them to still keep all of the goodness, 100% whole grain of the rice kernel, but it's available to you and can be used in 10 minutes from boiling. So I think that's really a remarkable kind of thing to rely on. If you have issues with standing, if you have issues with just being in the kitchen, if you just want to eat in quick manner but eat healthy, there are products there that are available that will enable you to do that. And I also want to tell you that Again, because these expand as they cook, don't be put off by price. Everything that I brought today was on sale. Ordinarily, you're going to find sale items in every section of the store. And sure enough, in the grain section, all kinds of on sale items. So breaking it down per meal cost is not really out of control. And probably within your budget, if you're also thinking of how expensive meat proteins are or other animal proteins are, they're very comparable. So, <clears throat> um, let's see. So start slow, switch to a, switch a familiar. So if you are always having white rice or white macaroni or white noodles, like these beautiful guys right here, which say enriched macaroni product. So I know that this product is a long way from where it originated. 
that it's been, um, all of the bran has been taken, all of the germ has been taken. Only thing that's left is the starchy carbohydrate to make this pasta. And, and that being said, then they decided to fortify it with extra vitamins and other things. But I'm not saying it's bad, I'm just saying it's probably not the healthiest for you or the most naturally occurring product. But if this is your go-to, maybe on occasion, <laughs> you might want to try some whole grain pasta. You can cook them similar times. You could start off with three quarters white and just a quarter of the whole wheat or whole grain pasta and just see how you enjoy it. It definitely is going to have a different bite. It's definitely going to be a little denser. It's definitely not going to like that kind of slither slither. But if we're considering our health, we might want to consider just at least trying it. It is nutty. It is fun. It's very, uh, it is, it's very good. I like it. <laughs> okay. Um, so switching to a familiar, if you're a white bread girl, you might want to go to a different kind of bread. If you're a white pasta person, you might want to go to a different type of whole grain pasta. Um, <clears throat> and if you want to rethink your snacking, okay. The best snacks, of course, are fruit and vegetables, but rarely do we always go for that celery stick and carrot. So if we're rethinking our snacking, we probably want to rethink in a healthier direction as well. There are products out there. I just brought two that are going to tell you 100% whole grain. Triscuits only has three ingredients. So it really is relying on the whole grain to make this cracker. Wheat thins as well, 100% awesome with whole grain. Wheat thins, 21 grams of whole grain per serving. So very important just to do a little bit of uh, eye examining on your boxes and packaging to see. And um, this also, let's see. Oh, sorry. Oh, snacks. I'm sorry. And if you enjoy popcorn as a snack, popcorn really has very little added to it. This is a gluten-free, no artificial colors, flavors, no artificial preservatives snack. So this would be a great way to get your serving of uh, grain for the evening while you're watching, I don't know, your television shows or whatever. So. All right. So even if you're starting slow, I still think that you could challenge yourself to include whole grains in your diet without too much trouble. Um, they are incredibly healthy for us. They do bring a lot of fiber and nutrients and vitamins and healthy fats all in one bundle to the table. And the variety is unbelievable. So we are mostly familiar with rice and wheat and barley and buckwheat and rye, as far as grains that we think of, but there are so many more out there. This is this month's Food and Wine magazine, and I'm not promoting you to run out and get Food and Wine magazine, but I just want to make sure that you understand exactly how uh, incredibly varied our grains out there in the world and they have and also how trendy if you want to be food trendy grains are all over the place now so this is a whole section of this brand new magazine and it's called grains of plenty and it talks about grains that i never heard about before but probably are available 
This is talking about a beautiful salad made with sorghum. So sorghum is a tall grain that grows down south but can also be found here. And Bob's Red Mill, if you're familiar with Bob's Red Mill, they do a lot of grains and you can find their products in the grocery store. This is talking about a grain called Fonio that's very healthy for you, has a lot of protein, and they have a recipe here that they added it into meatballs. So a different way of thinking about getting your grain in your diet would be to adding it into meatloaf, meatballs, some other kind of preparation where it's just kind of folded into a batter or um, a meat product. Uh, this is a millet, little flatbread. It's kind of maybe off-putting to you because of the color, but that is the color of the millet flour. So I don't know, I think it could be very dramatic on a plate instead of off-putting. And then these are some noodles that are made with teff flour. Teff is a flour that's used in a lot of Ethiopian foods. It has a very interesting, nutty, and um, just, it's a flavor that you won't, you know, it's a flavor just like basmati rice has its own flavor, or forbidden rice has its own flavor. Teff also has its own flavor, and uh, it's usually used as a flour to make porridges or in that situation, these beautiful dark colored uh, noodles that are very filling. So um, when I talk about filling too, and I talk about calorie for calorie, grains, one thing that I didn't mention is that they're great for watching your weight. Because when you eat grains and the density of grains or the density of a pasta, or a bread made with whole grains is different and you feel more full. So if you feel more full, maybe you're not gonna snack on that bag of Cheetos later. I don't know, maybe. But um, anyway, so it could help you if you have a weight gain target, if you want to gain weight or you want to lose weight. So I just think grains are just fantastic and I also think that there's so many varieties that to deny yourself something just because you've never tried it before or you don't uh, see it on every like menu in a restaurant that we've not been to in a year but um, if you don't see it and it's not a familiar word that doesn't mean that it's not good for you or that it wouldn't be fun to kind of try out. And I just think that maybe just even once in a blue moon, if you accept that challenge, you could be very pleased with the outcome and maybe grains will become more of your go-to uh, part of your menu. So uh, I wanna thank Hans for helping us put together this workshop and also the Heinenberg Senior Community Center. I hope you guys learned some stuff about grains that maybe you didn't know before and that you'll be encouraged just to try out grains once in a while or frequently. Thanks. <laughs>